this is the only exclusively blues bar that does blues music every day of the week. Yeah. There's some sort of bars or pubs of blues nights or jam nights, but they're not blues bars. Mm. So I think that's important because a lot of musicians who are into blues, this is somewhere they can come where they can see older musicians, younger musicians, listen to music, talk, you know, it's not just once a week. It's yeah. a, you know, it's, you know, I think it's really good. I've yeah. been coming here for about yeah. 10 years. And yeah, it is like the only bar that does every night of the week blues music um, than any other place. And, and I think generally that this whole area is kind of boring compared to this bar. This area is yeah. alone, at least, yeah. this area. There's nothing really else going on. This bar is packed like on a Tuesday with a queue where everywhere else is dead. You know what I mean? Every other bar is dead in this area. Um, but yeah, that's what, the significance of this bar generally is live, live music every night, which is kind of rare in London these days. For me, I started playing guitar, and the first kind of music that kind of made me think, oh yeah, I want to play this, was kind of rock. Mm. Yeah. And it was kind of, at the time, it was kind of the 80s and it was all the technical flashy Van Halen stuff. And I tried it and I wasn't that good at it. And also, not that I wasn't good at it, but it just felt wrong. It felt like, well, why should I learn, you know, it just didn't make sense. It was just, you know, tapping, you know. Mm. And then I got into stuff like Led Zeppelin and Hendrix and Cream, which was kind of blues based. And then I'd read interviews with these bands and they'd mention like Howling Wolf or Muddy Waters. So I'd buy albums by these people and then check them out for myself and then you know you could see where it came from. The thing is is that this bar, the significance of this bar, is that I never really got into blues. I just realised this really. I never really got into blues until I came here. And that was five years ago. And that was at a jam night and the guy called Ian Siegel got on stage and played acoustic guitar blues and he was phenomenal. And I just went, wow, this is amazing. And then I was a barman then. I started working here as a barman about four and a half years ago. And um, before that, I was just Led Zeppelin. And, I, and Led Zeppelin did a lot of blues, but I never really followed that yeah. line because of Zeppelin. I always loved Zeppelin too much, did not go yeah. down that route, you know what I mean? Zeppelin was enough. And then I was working behind the bar and somebody put on Howling Wolf, chess recordings, yeah. best of, which is yeah. phenomenal. And uh, once I heard him singing like this primal, deep, you know, massive, you know, his voice was huge, but it was also varied, he could do two different voices and stuff. And I just got into that one, like some of the songs were just one chord, and they were just using their imaginations on it. And that's what, that's that's when I really got into blues, you know. Yeah. It was this bar that got me into blues, and I just really realised that now, actually. Playing music since I was about 10 years old, which will be frighteningly 38 <laughs> years. Uh, as a harmonica player, it had been all the old school fellas Sonny Boy Williamson, Little Water Jacobs, uh, George Harmonica Smith, and all the fellas from the Chicago air. Area in the Chicago era of uh, electric blues. Well, when we go to Europe, it's, it's more often than not it's to go to play festivals. So consequently, there's going to be a much bigger audience because they're there for a festival. You know, likewise when we do festivals in England, you know, they're, 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 there's thousand plus people always. So obviously, it's a, it's, a, it's a louder, noisier, bigger audience. It's, it's, it's more geared towards the uh, Chicago blues, which is, it's all the fellas from Mississippi, they went north in, in, into Chicago and then the, amp, the, the instruments became amplified and so they become a little louder, a little tougher and a bit more um, urban, you know. We're 
always hoping that he's going to make another comeback. You know, he, he always it, it it peaks and troughs all the way through. You know, we've had blues revivals in this country or worldwide since it was first popular. You know, it comes and usually in um, average hours, it's usually in ten years cycles it becomes really really popular and then fades away. It's always popular on things like uh, commercials on television. You're always going to have blues on you know, blues based music. because of the proximity yeah. and then you end up you know making yeah. friends or maybe not or but you're kind of almost forced to talk to people and communicate with people yeah. and interact rather than everyone's in their separate corners because when it gets packed yeah. you've got to be a bit you know because people are dancing about you've got your pint you can't be too precious and that yeah. so you're going to interact with people whether you yeah. like it or not and I think that's a good thing because yeah. you, know, you just end up talking to anyone and sometimes it's fun.